A common mistake people make is to plot categorical data in a line chart. Here we have the ratings for the degree of difficulty of each sport for the categories on the horizontal axis. And I think you'll agree there are way too many sports for it to be any use, although some might call it chart art. When you have a lot of series to display in a chart, you need to decide whether to separate your data into panel charts or spark lines so you can clearly view each series. Or you could focus on just one or two series and let the other series provide context. In the dot plot chart here, we've called out one sport, speed skating, and the other sports show the range and distribution in each skill. We could add a slicer to allow our readers to select the sport they want highlighted in the chart. Let's take a look. The trick here is that there are two charts. The chart on top shows the sport selected in the slicer. But if I move it to the right, you can see there's another chart behind. And the chart behind is plotting all of the sports. Now the data for this chart is here in an Excel table. You can see I've got the sport, the skill and the score. And I've created a pivot table from that data. This pivot table is the source for the chart on the bottom that shows all of the sports. So let's go ahead and I'll insert a line chart with markers based on this data. Now this is a pivot chart, so it's showing these field buttons. First thing I want to do is hide all the field buttons. Then we'll go in and we'll remove the grid lines and the legend. Let's make the chart a bit bigger. I want this chart to be 11 by 17. Next we need to actually format each line and marker so that all we can see is the marker. So I'm going to select one and control one to open the format series pane. In the paint bucket, I want to say no line and then under marker options, I want the built-in marker size nine. We're going to make it a bit bigger. And then I want to give that a solid fill, but I need it to be a more pale gray color so it sits in the background. And we need to repeat that for the line of the marker. And then I need to rinse and repeat for each line. So back into line settings, no line, marker, built in, size nine, solid fill. Thankfully it picks up the gray and likewise for the border. Now there are a ton of lines in this chart. So doing it manually is quite tedious. Thankfully though, I have a macro. So on the developer tab under my macros, I've got this chart series format. With my chart selected, I'm going to run the macro and it fixes all the formatting in the blink of an eye. The next thing I want to do is fix this vertical axis height. The maximum score anyone can get is 10. So I'm going to fix it to a maximum of 10. And that way I'm going to control the axes on both charts so that they're the same height. It's important that the scale on the axis is the same in both charts. Otherwise your dots aren't going to line up. Now I've just given myself a bit of space at the top because we're going to put the legend up there. And now I'm ready to create my next chart, which is the one that contains the dot of the selected item in the slicer. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and we'll close this for a moment. Now I can't use a pivot chart for my chart that sits on top because I want to limit the number of series that the user can display as highlighted dots in the chart to just one spot. And as you probably know, a pivot chart will display everything in the pivot table. Case in point, this pivot chart displays all of these points and I can't pick and choose. Whereas if I use a regular chart, then I can control the cells that the chart references. That said, I still want to use a slicer to allow my user to select the sports because that's a nice user experience. So we're going to insert a dummy pivot table. Again, I'll select the data, insert pivot table. So we're going to put it on an existing worksheet, put it here in my workings. So I'll put it in cell B18 and click OK. Now I'm just going to right click and go into the pivot table options and turn off the auto fit because I don't want this pivot table to mess with the size of my columns. This pivot table is just going to contain the sports going across the columns. So at the moment, there's no filter. It's listed all of the sports and you can see them behind the chart there. The next thing I want to do for this pivot table is insert the slicer. This is going to be what my user chooses the sports to highlight in the chart from. So I'm going to right click, add a slicer. 
So we've got our slicer. Now if I select one sport in the slicer, it filters the pivot table. Now I don't need the grand total, so right click, remove the grand total. So we've got the slicer for the interactivity and we've got the pivot chart that shows all of the dots. Now I need to collate the data that's going to feed my second chart. Remember, I can't use a pivot chart. So I'm going to build a table manually. I need this list of sports, so I'm just going to paste them there. And then we're going to populate the values using an index and match formula. So let me just move this across here so we've got a bit of room. So index, where are we indexing? Well, we want to find the values from the pivot table. And then which row number do we want returned? Well, I want all of the rows returned, all of these ones. So I'm going to skip this argument. You could enter a zero in here that will also return all the rows, but one less character is slightly more efficient. The next argument is column number. Well, I'm going to use match to find what column auto racing is in this row up here. We need an exact match. So the argument for exact match is zero. Now let me just scroll back so you can see the formula again. Close match, close index. Now I have Office 365, so when I press enter, you're going to see the results of the formula spill to the cells below. If you don't have Office 365, then you can still use this formula. Let me copy it and show you. What you need to do is select all of the cells first, then enter your formula, then Control, Shift and Enter, and you get the same results. So just remember to select the cells first and finish with Control, Shift and Enter. So I'll delete that there. We're going to use this data here for our next chart. Now remember, we don't want a pivot chart. So I'm just selecting the row labels and the values, not the header, which is a pivot table. Then I'm going to insert the same type of chart, the line chart with markers. Let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of the chart title get rid of the grid lines, put a legend at the top, that's going to tell us what sport is selected. Now because I didn't include the auto racing cell in my selection when I inserted the chart, the series has no name. So I'm going to right click and select the data. I'm going to edit the series and reference that cell there. This won't convert it to a pivot chart, so we're all safe with that. Now we can see the name correctly in the legend. Next, I need to format this line just like I did for the other chart. So control one, let's get rid of that. In the paintbrush, we want no line. The marker is the built-in size nine. Now for the solid fill, we want to pick a color that's going to stand out. So I'm going to go with this blue color here and we need to repeat that for the solid line. So our chart is pretty much done. The size isn't quite right. So let's go ahead and format it. 11 by 17. So now we have our charts that are the same size. Let's align them. We'll move some things around so we've got some more space. And I'll bring this up into view. So there's my chart showing the selected values in the slicer. Let me select the legend and just fix the maximum to 10 so that it's consistent with the chart behind. And in order for the chart behind to show through, I need to make the fill color for this chart transparent. So let's go in and format the shape fill to no fill, and we'll also get rid of the outline. Now you can see the chart behind. If I move it around, let's align them. So we'll use the align tools to center it vertically and horizontally. Now I've got to do a little bit of adjustment on the chart area because you can see this vertical axis isn't quite aligned. So let's adjust them. Okay, so our charts are nicely aligned, our axes match up. We've got a little bit of double vision going on because we can still see the axis labels from the chart behind. So what I'm going to do is select them and just format the font to white so that we can't see them at all. Make sure you do it on the chart behind, otherwise the white will sit on top of the labels on the chart behind and you don't want that. So let's align them again. And as a finishing touch, I'm just going to move this legend across to the left. So now when our user selects a sport in the slicer, the chart on top updates to give the illusion that there's only one chart. Now in this example, I only want my user to select one sport, 
But really, there's nothing to stop them selecting multiple sports, and you can see them behind here. But those sports aren't being plotted in the chart. So we want to help guide them. And we can do that in a couple of ways. The first one is I'm going to right click and go into the slicer settings and just give them a little tool tip in the header here. So select one sport. But if they don't select one sport, maybe they're just a little cheeky, then we want to pull out the big guns and give them a red warning sign. So what I'm going to do, let me just select all of these and move them across so you can see. I can use an if formula here to test whether this cell here is blank. If it's blank, then I know that they haven't selected more than one item. So I can just return a blank. But if it contains text, or any value, then it suggests to me that they've selected more than one sport and I'm going to give them a warning about that. So we're just going to tell them select only one sport. Close my parentheses. So you can see when I select more than one, the warning comes up. When I select only one, the warning is hidden. But obviously we need to put that somewhere that they're going to see that warning. So with the chart selected, I'm going to insert a text box over here and then select the outside of the text box equals and I'm going to link it to the cell that contains my if formula and press enter. Now let's select multiple items. Now you can see the text box returns the error. Let's make it a bit more in your face. We'll make it red to really stand out. So now if they select one sport, they don't get a warning. If they select more than one, they get the warning sign. So you can use this technique in lots of areas to guide your users and to put in some safety nets to prevent them making mistakes. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. I hope you can make use of this technique. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.